Uh, I'm Nele Brusselaars. I'm a clinical epidemiologist. I'm a medical doctor by training. And I'm a researcher uh, doing lots of research in the microbiome field and also on long-term effects of commonly prescribed drugs. Well, I think nowadays in medicine we have made huge advancements already and we can treat the large majority of diseases, but there are still many diseases that we don't have an answer for, uh, that we can't treat many chronic diseases uh, that we just keep treating with, uh, with drugs. And for me, precision medicine may be a solution to also treat those people to get them back in a more healthy state, uh, which can be, of course, benef be beneficial for a very long time and for many, many people, although we can do a lot in medicine already. Well, you do see that uh, many of those new technologies and new fields of research are already tested also in clinics. Uh, I am a medical doctor, so I know what's going on uh, among my colleagues. A few years ago, it's not that long ago that nobody have heard, had heard about the microbiome, for example. Now everyone is like, oh, we want to do something with microbiome. Also in clinics, okay, often it's small studies. So they do need bigger studies uh, to be... Yeah, very useful uh, on a long-term and global perspective. But all those little in initiatives and a bit less small initiatives can help uh, in this whole story and have also an impact outside of uh, the local settings, for example, Belgium, Europe and globally. Uh, okay. But we do need an international, uh, more international research and bigger research. Uh, there are really things which are implemented, but for those it's often without a solid basis of knowledge. Uh, for example, probiotics, prebiotics, it's a uh, hype, it's a big market already, but there is not enough research to really show that it works. So I think we need to have a more solid research first. Uh, and it's not only the probiotics, we also need to restore our microbiome. Uh, ourselves, uh, for example, by limiting our prescribed drug use, uh, living healthier, if those factors are not in place, I don't think any uh, you know, supplement will do the trick. Uh, so we do need um, yeah, to understand everything better before we can really implement it, but it has a very big potential in women's health, uh, like for example, to prevent preterm birth, also in cancer treatment, will cancer treatment work or not? Uh, so those are, th or in chronic diseases, obesity, metabolic diseases. So there is a big potential. And uh, so I do see that, uh, I do foresee that there will be microbiome treatments in the near future. Some of them are already there, but then uh, it can, it's a very fast evolving field. Uh, if you see, like 10 years ago, nobody knew about the microbiome, and now everybody is already talking about There are already microbiome treatments on the market, for example, fecal microbial transplants. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, since so many people are now doing research on it, uh, there will be uh, many things already implemented. Not all of them will have the label as a drug, uh, but also more like treatments like uh, maybe the vaginal smearing after C-section, uh, which is already tested. There is not enough evidence yet to make it widespread. Um, so that's uh, in, in babies who re uh, get a C-section, that they smear the perineal uh, microbiome of the mother around the mouth okay. to give them a better start. So that's something, it's easy, it doesn't cost anything, but if it shows to be beneficial in a few years uh, after a few big studies come out, then it's something that can be implemented worldwide already. Well, I think the problem is that we don't know yet. Uh, yet the, most studies are based on small cohorts, so we do need to know the, what is normal in a big population. So precision medicine is, I think, something which will not be useful for everyone because it's also something expensive. But to really know how it works and how it can be beneficial, we need to know what the normal is in the total population so we can uh, know enough to then treat that little group which has special needs in that uh, perspective, I think. Um, 
yeah, we do need big data. And luckily, with all the technological advancements, the prices go down. Because indeed, if you have like thousands of samples, it's still expensive. Uh, so in that aspect, it's good that uh, we go bigger because we yeah, humans have a lot of variation as well. Okay, the microbiome, the bacteria have a lot of variation. We have a lot of genetic variation as well. Uh, so I think bigger is in that aspect for sure better. And I also think it's very good that there is more and more uh, multidisciplinary, transdisciplinary collaborations, because indeed, as we heard as well, we do need collaborations between clinicians, basic researchers, epidemiologists. Uh, it's still, yeah. <laughs> you're still not that uh, present in the field of precision medicine, I think. But if you go bigger, you need good study design, you need the good methods to really um, consider all the variability between humans as well. Yeah. We're not all the same. Uh, we have different ages, different comorbidities, different characteristics, lifestyle, diet, drug use. I think it's already wonderful that there are so many clinicians uh, and also students in, uh, who will become active clinicians in the future are participating in events like this because they are the next generation, they will be treating uh, us and our family members in not such a distant future and now they already know what's going on and they were, will be the ones who need to convince their patients and the public as well to live healthier, to use treatments uh, and hopefully, yeah, I always hope that the clinicians do have a solid research training as well because that's also something I see in, in research that it's often still um, a bit of a translation problem between the basic researchers and the clinicians. They, do, they are, yeah, both groups are excellent in what they do in daily life, but they do often have some communication problems. So it's very good that uh, events like this hopefully fill that gap and make it easier to communicate, so to reach the research to a higher level.